Okay, so here's a two liter flask. You can see it's not even marked at 500. We'll probably fill it up just here at the bottom, just kind of like the other solution we saw over at the hood. And the reason for that is that it's going to boil considerably when it um, when the pressure goes out of the autoclave, uh, or it can. It's not supposed to, but uh, if it does, it makes something of a mess. And the reason that we use a flask instead of a beaker is that the flask obviously has a small hole. We get less area for uh, contaminants to get into and it's easy to cover. So the way boats, that's what I call these things. This one's a little covered in powder. It's because it's always used to weigh out the same thing. The scale needs to be turned on. <clears throat> With the way boat on there, it automatically zeroes it. If it didn't zero it, see I take this off, it's at zero, it's at minus four grams. But if it wasn't on there, I just hit zero and it'll reset to zero to whatever weight's on there. We need 20 grams. So having a little extra, it doesn't have to be precise. This isn't one of those steps that has to be exactly precise. Having a little extra won't hurt anything. Pour this in here. Generally, I put the solid media in first and then the water. Okay, tap that out. Put this down. Now let's add 500 of water. Now you want to use distilled water. This is distilled water in these two jugs here. Yeah, the sink may contain, sink water may not be clean or contain, uh, or it may contain impurities that might affect bacterial growth. 500. So we'll add the 500. Do it, I do the shiny side out, fold it in half, cover the top, then we'll put some autoclave tape on top of this. Autoclave tape is looks like white tape, but it isn't. It has stripes through it. And when it's treated at a high temperature and pressure, it turns black. So we know that things have been um, sterilized. So let's mix this up a little bit, break up all the chunks. We don't want to put chunks in the autoclave. It just results in, in perhaps impurities after the solution is done. Autoclave supplies are in this freezer room. Now again, I'm shaking this up, making sure that I get everything in a solution. But um, just in case things boil up, even though they shouldn't, or the, the, the uh, flask breaks, we need to put everything in the autoclave in a tray like this. Okay? And it also is handy because this tray cools off quicker than the, the glass flask, so you can pull it out of the autoclave a little quicker. And anything that we're going to put in there, particularly that has liquids in it, needs to have go in one of these trays. Autoclave tape is back there on that yellow shelf. And if you look closely, you can see the stripes here of the tape. Even though it's white, um, you know it's autoclave tape. I'm just going to grab a little bit, throw it on top of the foil, and that will be an indicator whether or not it's been sterilized. We're at the autoclave room. So show the room 221 in the Woodstow building. The door code is 80688, right? Okay. <laughs> now the autoclave is the quick right inside of this room. Um, right now it's been turned off. We'll turn it on. And this wheel is a locking mechanism for the door. cold but it heats up really quick. Now what the autoclave is, if you look on this side of it, there's actually that foil and there's a jacket inside of, in between the, or a, a hollow chamber in between this foil and the inside of the autoclave and that feels full of steam and causes a lot of pressure. Uh, and then the other part about the autoclave is that there is a seal on here. At the moment, this seal isn't sealed too well, and there's a lot of steam that leaks out. So we're going to autoclave these, these liquids for 25 minutes, 
and normally 20 minutes is okay, but we're giving a little extra five minutes for it to uh, compensate for the leaky seal. Now this thing is almost an all-going solution. There's one or two chunks in there. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect in solution, just so long as the major big globs of the powder are uh, in solution, it'll be fine. Okay? So now we slide the tray in here. So for it to run the autoclave, simply lock the wheel. And it's on. And uh, we just need to choose whether, how we do it, whether it's dry goods, liquids, or abort. So this will stop any cyclone midway through. Um, we're going to just simply hit liquids and we'll go. Now, when we pull things out of the autoclave, one thing I wanted to make clear is when you get things out of the autoclave, we'll undo the door, right? This hinge is pretty good. I don't need to have any sort of force to really pull this thing open. What's happened in the past, students have put their hand up here and opened the door, and while on, that, this chamber still has a significant, even though the run is finished, the chamber still has a significant amount of steam in it. And that steam comes right up against the wrist, and we've had one, or, one student actually that had third degree burns all along his forearm here, because they're not, you know, you don't want to put your hand right coming out of the steam. Now if you're wearing a lab coat, you know, that, would, that, that could save you there. Just undo the wheel and pull it open. If it helps, use both hands to pull the wheel open, then you'll remember not to put your hand up here. Even though it, it runs at about uh, 25 minutes, it, the timer takes a while to get going because first of all, the pressure has to build up, and once the pressure is built up, that's when the timer will start. It takes about an hour to finish, also because the liquid cycle has a very slow release of the steam. Because if we drop pressure really quickly, all the liquids would boil and make a mess. So the autoclave um, knows to release the pressure slowly, and that's the difference between the liquid and the dry cycle. The dry cycle actually finishes a lot faster.